Welcome, friends, to the Someone Gets Me podcast. I am your host, Diane Allen, and I am so delighted that you're here. This podcast was created because I believe there is a visionary leader inside each one of us who is waiting to be seen. In each episode of Someone Gets Me, you will hear useful tips from successful visionaries who will share their stories about how being seen has allowed them to take their vision out into the world with action. How to break the cycle. Hi, everybody. Today's episode is a practical episode with the how-tos of breaking cycles. It's come to my attention recently by multiples of the people that I work with, pretty much everybody, is the desire to break the cycle. Either it's an intergenerational cycle, a transmission of pain, if you will, or a personal cycle that they're trying to break. I mean, and I've broken plenty of cycles in my life too, and I'm sure you have. But there are some certain things that are very important for us to understand when it comes to how to break the cycle. The first step is to tell ourselves the truth, right? That we're in a cycle or that we're in a pattern that's not serving us in the highest good. It doesn't even have to be destructive. It just may not be serving you. So the first thing is tell yourself the truth. Now, sometimes that's really hard because our ego, that's not our amigo, often wants to make things a certain way to keep things and the status quo going. So it tries to keep things moving in a way that maybe has some complacency or ease to it and doesn't want us to open up that Pandora's box. And so sometimes that willingness to go within and tell the truth, really, the real truth, can be daunting. That's why sometimes people call people like me a mentor or something like that to kind of talk it through and go deeper in a safe way. That's the first step. The second step is to realize that once you make the decision to change the pattern, then everything starts to change. Because remember, whatever we put out in the world that we wish to do, the universe conspires to assist us. In fact, I was watching a show once and Barbara Streisand quoted somebody and the quote was, at the moment of commitment, the universe conspires to assist you. So at the moment of your commitment to change the pattern, the entire universe begins to assist this. Now, here's the irony. When we make the decision to change the pattern, most people do not realize what that means. They simply think it means a mental shift, which it includes that, but it's not just that. Or they think, well, I can think my way through this, or they think it's simple. It's not simple, and it's also very intense. So the decision to change a pattern has cascading consequences that a lot of people don't know they're getting into. I know when I decided to change the patterns and the intergenerational stuff of my family, I didn't know what I was getting into. And I'm kind of glad I didn't because I might've chickened out or tried to stall or something. So it takes a lot of guts and courage and faith to decide to change the pattern, which means cut out all other possibilities, and then to keep walking on the road. Because it's like um, a finger painting, it can get very messy. Because once we make a decision, now we have to bring our intellect, our mind, our heart, our intuition, our body on all the way to the cellular level into a place where we can begin to kind of clean out the junk drawers, purge the system, and then put into the system the things that are for the higher good. That's not always easy. Think about when you've gone through your closet and you're trying to pick out clothes to throw away. You know, you're going to throw it away or you're going to donate it. No, I'm going to keep it one more year. And then we end up eventually giving it away, right? We do that because as humans, we hold on to things. So over time, over your lifetime and over the lifetimes of the people before you, holding on to things, holding on to things, holding on to things. And when we decide to change the pattern, it's time to let go of things. It's time to release things, open our hands from the death grip of life and open our hands and allow things to flow. So going from that tight holding on to allowing things to grow and and move is a big shift for a lot of people. 
Mm -hmm. It requires a little bit of cognitive understanding of the process, but it requires more an openness and receptivity and willingness to the nonverbal aspects of breaking the pattern and making the changes. Because see, a small part of our healing and our um, breaking these patterns is verbal. The larger part is nonverbal. So if you're a smart, gifted person or you're talented and you're, or you're a verbal person, you can get seduced into the idea that you can just talk about it or think about it and process and figure it out. It's not how it works. Not at all. The way it does work is to have truth and honesty, what's really going on, and then be open and receptive to new ideas and then respond to the new and then obey the new way, right? So for an example, you might want to meditate. That means learning how to breathe because people that hold their breath or breathe shallow are moderating some kind of pain in their system. And I'll bet you're not even breathing fully right now because most people don't breathe fully. Even I sometimes catch myself holding my breath because that's the first thing we learn how to do when we're infants, when there is pain. And the pain here means a disconnection from our source. So it can come in multitudes of ways. And so we hold our breath to moderate pain. And we also manipulate our food one way or the other when the breath doesn't work. And then we start doing things with our own identity as men or women on the planet and our own expression of our physical being, whatever that would be. And when we start manipulating all of these things, it's to moderate pain. And if there's intergenerational pain coming down, sometimes what we're fixing or we're healing or we're rectifying when we decide to break the pattern didn't even start with us. So it feels bigger than us. Sometimes it feels so daunting. I can remember when I was younger and I started doing all this work, I would tell people I would be going along life and I would open up a new awareness and then it would feel like this big wet blanket would just come over and whoop. And I would be like almost trapped underneath this wet, heavy, dark blanket that I had to finally peel out of. And sometimes those dark nights of the soul or those days that I was by myself just trying to get get clear of this stuff were really hard and really um, difficult and very scary sometimes, but also freeing at the end, like all these emotions. And so I hear people say, you got to do the work. Well, it's not the kind of work like we think of as going to work. It's like being willing to tell the truth and say, you know what? Maybe I'm carrying around a bunch of stuff in this system that is not mine to carry. Maybe it's old news. Maybe it was never mine to start with and it was given to me and I didn't know how to say no. Maybe. So we have to be willing, if we're going to break the pattern, really, to tell the truth and make changes. Now, I have several clients that have said independently of each other, they don't even know each other and they're totally different kinds of people saying, I decided I'm going to break the family pattern. And that's great. And they're all gifted. And so what they did is they decided they were going to break the family pattern. They decided, which cut out all other possibilities. And then the universe started to assist it. So what happened was the people who've said that comment and, and made the decision who then also decided they were not going to do the inner deep spiritual nonverbal work are having anger episodes. And um, I call them like little eruptions. And sometimes I call them a tolerance break where they go along and they go along and they're white knuckling, white knuckling, white knuckling while the brain is saying I'm breaking a pattern, but the rest of them is still holding on with a death grip to the old. And then they blow up just like that. Boom. And it, and it harms people and it creates um, a whole different kind of cycle that pretty soon they get addicted to the anger blow up because they finally get a, a relief from the death grip by blowing up. So consequently, by not doing the inner work, that person is now creating a new challenge. And that is addiction to the cycle of hold on, hold on, hold on, blow up, hold on, hold on, hold on, blow up. Because that is what the neurology is going to start doing. The biology is going to start adjusting to being like in a pressure cooker and then blowing up. And then it gets closer and closer and closer. And this is because the person made the mental decision to break the pattern. 
and is refusing to do the inner work in order to successfully complete the decision. Okay. The person made the decision to break the pattern, the family pattern, stated it out loud, said that's what was going to happen, and then refused to do the inner work to actually break the patterning on the inside. So just mentally saying, I'm not going to do it like my parents did it, is not going to get you there. It's not. It's only going to create more issue unless you do the inner work. Now, there's an example of this in my own family. Um, and my wonderful mother, um, she told us the whole time I was growing up, you know, we're not, I'm breaking the pattern. We're not doing it like when she was young. And she gave bunches of examples that are irrelevant in, in this context. Well, what she did was she just did the opposite. She had too many rules. She gave us no rules. Okay. And so all she did is flip the coin. And in her reality, she thought she was breaking the pattern, but she did not break the pattern. She just mirrored the pattern on the other side. So now then when I decided I was going to break the pattern, I have to clear that belief of part A and part B, both sides of the coin. Neither of those things I started, yet they're instilled in my being or were instilled in my being until I decided to do the inner work to clear it out. And so then people say, well, Diane, what do I do? And I remember asking that question of people who were my mentors and therapists and all that along the way, what do I do? Well, the first thing is release the idea that you have to figure it out because you can't figure it out. It's not verbal. It's energetic. It's biological. It's neurological. We have to be willing to kind of go within our little beings and see where it's living. Like some of that pain was living right across my chest. In my 20s, I used to wake up with bruises. Looked like somebody took a hammer. So at nighttime, I was pushing on myself to help relieve the pain. I don't do that anymore because I healed the pain. And so we have to be willing to do the nonverbal and the pre-verbal work to free ourselves. Think of it this way. If the pain gets in non-verbally, it has to be healed non-verbally. If it gets in verbally, it can be healed verbally. So again, the majority of our freedom, our joy, our healing, our rectifying, whatever word, the majority is nonverbal, like 80% or more is nonverbal. So we have to be willing to breathe. Yeah, sometimes we just have to learn how to breathe and let the pain out. Or like if you ever get a massage and there's tears right here and your eyes come down, that's deep pain, meaning separation trying to come back together, trying to come back together. Our body is always trying to come back into harmony, to come back into harmony, come back into harmony. And all of these little landmines, pitfalls everywhere, keep it out of harmony. So important to realize that it's multiple things over time where we have to be willing to look at it, see it for what it is, and then love, our, love ourselves. One of the hardest lessons I had to learn when I was younger and one of the bigger lessons that most of the people learn I work with is to really love themselves. So here's a little practice. Get up in the morning and go look at yourself in the mirror, like eye contact and say your name. So in my case, I would say, Diane, I love you so much. I'm here for you all day, no matter what. And keep that eye contact. Mm -hmm. And if you cry, let yourself cry. Because that connection is required to love you. This is an ego or arrogance. It's like really caring on that deep level. Then at the end of the day to say, Diane, thank you so much for being there for me all day with all the crazy stuff that happened and all the great stuff that happened. You, you didn't abandon me. You stayed with me. Thank you. And honoring that all the parts of you move together. Because when we're in pain, and we're carrying this intergenerational stuff, and we're trying to break patterns, we have a lot of different fragments left all over the place. So it's time that we start collecting that. And so we collect it over time. There's a thing called flight to health. I have a client who does that, tries to, and she'll even say, oh, I'm flying to health now. Because it's very easy as a smart person to say, oh, that 
I understand what you're saying, Diane. I have to go within and look and clear it out and think that you're going to do it like by lunchtime tomorrow or as a weekend activity. And no, that's not how it works. It's a process. Our physical being is much more dense, takes a little longer than our mental and our spiritual and emotional being. And they're all connected. And so the self-love, the care and the compassion is important. That's why meditation of all its different kinds is required because we want to be breathing and receiving life. See, our exhale, our breath starts with an exhale, right? So if our breath starts with an exhale, then as the air comes in because of the pressure difference, we're receiving life. So when I say take a breath, when you go, no, that's, that's a pain response. If I say, take a breath and you go, oh, I can surrender and allow the breath to come in in a loving way. Now, now we're talking. So there's so many nonverbal ways. Another great nonverbal way to help yourself once you've decided to break that pattern is sound. I have singing bowls behind me. I have tuning ports, drums. I have lots of instruments here and it's sound and different kinds of music, but really it's the vibration of the sound. It's extremely important. It helps awaken and align and harmonize our being. It's very, very powerful. And then of course there's massage. And then there's breath work where you learn how to actually use your breath to unlock stuff and release it. Because your body bears the burden. So when you make that decision to change the pattern, you're making the decision to go in and take the, the stuff that has a stronghold and pull it out. Sometimes when we pull it out, it's not very easy. Sometimes when we pull it out, it's a pain in the butt. Sometimes it's easy. It's all different things, but we have to be willing. And so I've been hearing lately, a lot of people talk about somatic work and get in the body and all of that. And, and I, I say, look, listen to this, listen to, listen to what humans have done. If you go back, Many, many years, we were connected to the earth. We were connected to each other and our heart, our mind, our body, our soul, it flowed, lived in the seasons, awakened with the sun, went to sleep with the sun and lived in the harmony of what was happening. And then more and more industrialized and advanced we've got. Our food is poisoned. Our water is poisoned, right? We don't have any connection to earth, really, a lot of people. And now there's a resurgence of that. Well, you know, it's sad that it was lost by so many people. But the truth is, the truth is that we need to get reconnected. That's what the healing is. Reconnected to our own being, to the reverence of the fact that we humans have a spiritual essence and an ability to create and manifest and have amazing experiences, but we also have the ability to create and manifest harm and danger. It's up to us. So when you want to break the pattern of poverty, if you want to break the pattern of anger, if you want to break the pattern of domestic violence or trauma, if you're going to break the pattern, then suit up and show up and buckle up because it's not rainbows and unicorns. Now the result is really beautiful, but it's not easy. I, my very first spiritual mentor, he looked at me, this is many years ago, I was in my twenties. And he said, Diane, breaking patterns and working on these deep things is not for wimps. He said, so sadly, many people will chicken out. Sadly, many people will give up and they will succumb to addiction, dis-ease, you know, and all those kinds of things because it takes great courage and great guts to make the changes, to free ourselves and our loved ones from these traumas and trances and gook. I heard what he said, I understood it in English, but I didn't get it for many years because the more I've kept walking down this journey of breaking the pattern, the deeper I've gone and the more there is, and it's never done. 
So be aware that if you have destination addiction and you think it's going to be done by tomorrow or next week or next year, again, that's not true. There is no finish line. It's mile markers. There's no finish line. I'm much different than I was last year, and I'm way different than I was 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Completely different. I think only my fingerprints are the same, and I'm not sure about that. And there's more. There's always more work to do. There's always more excavation, like an archaeologist. That's why I look at it more like an archaeologist. There's always more. And as long as we're in human form, there's always more. So we're never done. So we want to give ourselves permission when we make the decision to break the pattern, to break the pattern by stepping into who we are, by showing up for life, by allowing ourselves to um, use everything that we're meant to be in our favor, by doing what's the highest and best good for all concerned, and by being willing to release the story and the identification with the pain as who you are. So as long as you say you're a survivor of fill in the blank, you are still giving control to whatever that thing is. As long as you continue to identify as someone who has fill in the, the issue, the dis-ease, you're still telling the story. The pattern is not broken. As long as my mother said, we will never have rules like we did when I was a kid, she didn't break the pattern. She thought she broke the pattern. She did not break the pattern. It's the same thing when people say they're going to fight cancer or fight a disease, fight something. All of those movements are missing the mark because the object of attention is still the problem. If I say I'm going to fight cancer, cancer is my focus, right? Right. If I say I have cancer, cancer is my focus. So saying I'm fighting cancer is not shifting or healing or breaking the pattern because the object of focus is the same thing. To break the pattern would be to say I am focused on optimal health. I am aware that the body bears the burden and holds on to all the discord. So I choose to free my body of the discord. Now we're talking. Hear the difference? And I hear it and I see it all the time. And it's coming up more and more and more in my work with people saying they don't want to live like the generations before or even like themselves before, you know, a few 10, 20 years ago. But yet they think that just by making it a mental um, dance construct that that's all they need to do. No, that's, that's the ticket to the movie. It is not the movie. The movie is a high action packed drama, comedy, horror film, all of it all mixed into one. And it's totally worth every minute of it. It's totally worth every tear Every screaming day, every dark night, every sleepless thing is totally worth all of it because with everything you pull out and you free yourself, you leave an opening that you get to pick what goes in there. And what goes in there for me, I'm getting goosebumps, what goes in there for me is love and kindness and compassion. What goes in there for me is more connection to Mother Earth and the trees and the water. And what goes in there for me is freedom, inner freedom and peace that I can only have really by pulling out the junk that's in the way. Yeah. Doing the work. So when you decide you're going to break the pattern, understand the universe will conspire to assist you. Your resistance is futile. It will break you if you're not careful. Yeah, we have to be willing to do the work. So to continue to think that you can say I'm breaking the pattern and not actually do the inner honesty work and integrity work is a misnomer and, a, and something that's totally inaccurate. You have to be willing to get honest with yourself 
and make those inner changes. It's not easy. And don't do it alone. Yeah, we're taught in the society we, we have can do it alone, especially if you're an only child or the oldest child. We're taught, well, you're smart. Go in your room, figure it out, and then come out healed and come out done. I remember trying to do that when I was a teenager. It didn't work. Um, but that's what people do. They think they can do it on their own. I even had somebody one time come to me and they took all these copious notes while I was working with them. And then they said, well, thanks for all the information. I'm going to go take all my notes now and have a better life. Without trying to do any of the work, the inner change and shifting and opening and freeing and cleansing, didn't do any of that. The person ended up down um, in South America in a very big psychiatric crisis. They thought that they could run from the work by intellectually learning the concepts. The concepts alone and the cognitive information alone do not do it. Otherwise, otherwise, there would not be so much mental illness. Otherwise, smart people would not suffer with depression and anxiety and imposter syndrome and on and on. And we do. So the idea that we can outthink it or figure it all out is goofy. Because we have evidence that um, all the people who've tried everything and then they finally seek help. Well, all those things they tried to figure out didn't work. And like I lovingly say, your A game, your very best landing landed you exactly where you are in your life right now. Your very best. So it is important to be open and willing and to take new information in and try on some new clothes and try on some new things. Which means your ego that's not your amigo needs to take the back seat just a bit. Yeah. So. From me, a skilled, intuitive mentor with lots of education and experience, I invite you when you say that you're going to change the pattern, whatever the pattern, please tell yourself the truth and be willing to go within and clear out the mess that's in the way. Because if you want to be happy or successful or free, you have to be willing to let go of the very things that got you sick, disconnected in the first place. You have to be willing to let go of that old in order to receive the new. You can't grab the new and still hold on to the old at the same time. It doesn't work that way. You have to be willing to let go of that old in order to say yes to the new. And quite frankly, I choose love and joy and peace and kindness. That's what I choose. So I have to be willing to let go of grief and pain and heaviness. Because some of the some of the energy doesn't have any words for it because it wasn't mine to start with. But I have to still be willing to let it go and quit carrying the burden. So I hope you'll stop carrying the burden and you'll start putting things down. I hope that this episode has reminded you that this is not an intellectual exercise. Your life, your happiness, your vitality, your amazing self is urging you, is, is screaming from the inside out, please let go of the gook. Please release this stuff so I can be alive and free and vital. Because after all, joy is your natural state. If you're not living in a state of joy, there's still work to do. And if you're in a human body, there's always work to do, and that's okay. I hope this episode has been helpful, and remember that you're beautiful, you are lovable, and you are totally capable. Until the next episode of Someone Gets Me, be well. Thank you for listening. I trust you gained some valuable inspiration and information please join me and other visionaries in the Someone Gets Me Facebook group. Or for more information on my services and additional episodes, visit someonegetsme.com. Again, thanks for listening.